So I'm Bishwa. Um, I'm from a small town in India called Baroda, not so small anymore. It's about 400 kilometers north of Bombay. I live kind of in between Tokyo and Mumbai now. So what I'm doing at Swiss Cottage Gallery is that I'm investigating mostly public buildings or buildings that used to be houses that have now been opened up mostly because of famous personalities that lived there but then there are domestic spaces and I'm kind of interested in them. What excites me about Camden is firstly just how big it is. So many museums and so many buildings. It's also one of the last built um, boroughs in the central part of London. So there are buildings that were built between 1735 to 1947. Um, that's the time period that I'm interested in. And the reason for this time period is it is, well, colonial times in India. Because it's to this specific residency, which is about kind of India and Britain and 70 years since independence and partition, um, that I've chosen this period to work with. It's also a very, very broad period. It's almost 200 years. And that gives me a kind of wide range of buildings to investigate. It is believed that the exchange between the two countries led to not just, you know, just trade and goods and all of that, but an exchange of imaginations. I think that appears in architecture in very strange ways, in floor patterns, in motifs, in, you know, suddenly lions, start, you know, becoming part of gargoyles and, um, on the other hand, a city like Bombay was built by the British and then it has a kind of visual similarity to London in certain parts and it's that that I'm investigating this kind of exchange of the imagery or the exchange of um, motifs and exchange of designs that kind of, and also not kind of investigating them in a very very theoretical way but investigating them to kind of see if we can find links where none seem to appear, looking for those obvious signs of aging, looking for the very obvious links that they may have to things back at home. So fundamentally what I work with is drawing. In recent years watercolors have crept in. The layering has this grain to it which I really really love. Um, and because I'm not very good at watercolors, I'm quite actually bad at them, um, the process that I use is masking. So it's a lot of masking and then kind of applying the color flat. My reason for doing the floors is that while you kind of get the motifs out and you get kind of these decorative elements that have linkages in its patterning to textiles, to, you know, things outside of itself. But I feel that that's where you unconsciously leave marks so that there are scratches and cracks and that's also the area which has changed many a times and it's refurbished and um, not quite left alone, but yet goes quite unnoticed because you walk on it um, and you don't, you, you kind of tend to look at what you're interested in rather than look down on the floor. And to me, it becomes a marker of the changes because there's a building that's built, and then from the moment that it's occupied, it starts to acquire these markings, whether they're scratches, whether they're indentations, or like drastic changes like refurbishment. And you know, to try and find out if I can draw that act of looking or the act of walking on top of something. So, working inside a 
public space is a very, very strange experience actually because when I'm working in my studio space, like I don't see anyone for the, the entire day or sometimes for the entire week. Um, on the other hand, it's here it's not constant, but it's quite a lot of people walking in and out. And they may or may not actually speak to me, but they're still they're in and out of that space. And I think that makes it very exciting for me and kind of I hope that I'm able to find multiple people who, who kind of view the work from very different points of view than the one I come from.